In this video, we'll be talking about light-based rangefinders, essentially rangefinders that use light as the, the measurement thing that's bouncing off something or being used to measure the distance so it is away from something. And so the basic principle is that we have, we shine a light or a laser or an LED or whatever it may be, and we measure the light reflected back or various properties of that light reflected back. As we do so, we infer the distance away that object is that reflects that light to where we're shining the light from to begin with. There's a few different range finders of this particular type. We've got reflectance based ones that we're basically looking at the magnitude or how much light's reflected back. We've got triangulation based ones where we're looking at basically calculating some angles and triangulating where that light's returning. We've got time of flight based ones where we're measuring how long it's taken for that light pulse to go out and come back. And a little clue there is not very long because light travels fast, much faster than sound. And we've got phase shift ones, which are another form of LiDAR as well. So a few different ways that we can use light to detect how far something is away. Our light reflectance ones are our most basic ones and probably easiest to understand as well. These come in a few different forms. For example, you probably walk through a shopping center and there's a brake beam sensor across various doors of a, a shop or the, the main doors of entering the shopping center from the car park. The idea is you've got um, a light source, it bounces off, there's a reflector at the other end and that bounces back and goes into the transducer and detects whether it's receiving that light that's bounced out and bounced back again or if someone's walked in the way of it and that light's not being received anymore. In doing so, they can keep the doors open or do something like that to, or have a beep noise that alerts people that people have moved into the store. Now that's one way these can work. Another way is having a light reflecting off a very close by object. And these are a typical sensors that you'd find in a photocopier or something like that. A tiny little sensor that has a little LED in it and a little receiver in it. And if there's some paper nearby it, the light will bounce off that paper and come back and it will detect there's paper there. If there's no paper nearby it, the light will go off and it just won't ever be bounced back. And so it says, well, it's out of paper. So a basic out of paper sensor there that we could use for measuring something at very close range. Next type we'll look at is those optical triangulation ones. And here we've got an IR or infrared LED. Often we do these in non-visible light, so we're not interfering or confusing things with our outside environment. And a linear infrared receiver. It's a linear receiver that can detect uh, along a line where that light's being bounced back. The LED produces a bright spot that we can't actually see, but it's an infrared spot on a distant reflected object. And basically that linear array detects where along that dot is occurring. Then we use triangulation and we can see here, we can compute that distance based on triangulation. As we increase the distance from our measurement part to the surface, uh, the offset on the linear array decreases. As we come closer together, we have a wider offset there uh, that we're measuring on our linear array. And this is what's going on inside it. We have that LED driver circuit that's driving the LED. We have a signal processing circuit that's connected to what we call our position sensing device. That's that linear array I talked about. We have some basic regulators and oscillators in there. And then we have our output circuit that gives us a voltage that's somewhat proportional to the distance we are away. And here's the sort of output we get from there. So you'll notice that it's not accurate in that short range uh, region. Um, so we don't do measurements of less than about eight centimeters or so. And then over that other region, we've got this nice slope that goes down that we can linearize and work out what sort of distance we are away from it. Now these sensors are relatively inexpensive. A uh, common one that's made is a sharp one here and have a range of less than about five meters or so. One of the things with these though is the accuracy is proportional to distance. So it's about a centimeter or so at close range and it gets worse as the range increases because it gets harder to measure what those angles are going to be. And it's got that analog output based on the distance. Now a few problems with these is one, the surfaces need to be reflective. If you've got non-reflective surfaces and one area that I've used these on in the past that worked terribly was trying to detect tires on cars. The black tires reflected very little light of any, any type really. 
uh, and it wouldn't detect them at all. You're getting very little bounce off of that infrared light on these. They're pretty short range. The environment around it can't be too bright, so they're not good for highly lit areas, and they don't work well on glass because the light goes through the glass, unlike an ultrasonic based one that would bounce off the glass, for example. Well, let's move to something a little bit higher tech, which are our time of flight based uh, LiDAR sensors. And basically, we call these laser radars, or they're called LiDARs, and they use that principle of time of flight, so detecting how long it takes, in this case, light to travel from our source location to our destination location and back again. We're doing it rather than sound like we had in sonar before. And light's fast, very fast compared to our sonar ones that we had before. But Light being this fast, we need super fast processing in our electronics and really accurate timekeeping to try and measure this distance, particularly when we're talking about fairly short ranges. We might be having a meter or two and we're talking about nanoseconds or sub nanoseconds that we need to be accurate with with our timing to accurately work out what that distance is going to be. Now, in terms of the range, these can be short range or very long range, up to kilometers. Now, the accuracy will decrease as we have much, much longer ranges. The accuracy can be quite high. For better quality LiDARs, we can have sub-centimeter accuracy, so quite good. And it can have very narrow beam width. So they've got lasers use a very fine beam. It's not spread out with a wide beam width like we had with the sonar ones. And so we can measure a single point or if we move it, a group of single points. Having said that, LiDARs vary a bit in cost from fairly inexpensive LiDARs, which are fairly new to market that can do a single point, to LiDARs that can do a plane, like a 2D plane, and they're thousands of dollars. So we've got different types of LiDAR for different applications. Now there's lots of different places we use LiDARs. For example, in a mobile speed gun that the police might use to measure how quickly your vehicle's moving. Uh, mobile robots doing obstacle avoidance, people doing mapping or um, mapping surveys, or doing, you can put these on a drone and doing, creating topographical maps from the air, working out how far distances are away. You can use these for measuring buildings, um, dimensions and things with buildings. You can use these to scan facades of buildings and actually do reconstructions, 3D reconstructions and models of buildings. So lots of different places these LiDARs can be used. Now I've mentioned previously with our timing that we need to be super, super accurate and have super, super accurate timing with our LiDAR to measure distance in any sort of accurate way. Well, another way this can be done rather than doing strict time of flight, which is what we were talking about before, as in measuring how long it takes for the light to travel from the source to the destination and come back again. Um, because if you want something in the order of a millimeter accuracy for that, you need to be able to measure to three picoseconds your timing accuracy, which is super, super accurate and fairly hard. Another way we can do it is we use phase shift LiDAR, where we have a laser range finder where we modulate a particular signal. Uh, we send that signal out, we have a bounce back, and then we compare the phase of the modulated signal that's internally created to the signal that's bounced back. We work out how much out of phase they are, and based on how much out of phase they are, we can work out what the distance is that's been sent. Um, the further the distance, the longer or the more out of phase that they should be. In this case, we can approximate our phase as uh, 4 pi d over the wavelength that we're modulating our light at. So we're looking at the phase shift between our transmit signal and our receive signal. So this is a different way we can implement LiDAR and get our phase shift based determination of what distance we're looking at. So this phase shift style LiDAR can be more accurate because the timing required is less stringent. We're not talking about picosecond accuracy in terms of trying to get our timing down pat. 